One plus one equals two, not, oh God, I'm so scared I'm going to buy gold. <laughs> What is up, guys? Thank you for checking out another video, guys. Really appreciate that. Make sure you hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos on precious metals. So why does Dave Ramsey absolutely despise gold and silver? So many years ago, I don't remember how many years ago, I read this book from Dave Ramsey. This is... A book basically um, talking about debt, being debt free, how to become debt free. Really, really good book. Dave Ramsey is a very intelligent person. He's a very smart investor. He's come from millions to bankrupt to millions again. So he knows his stuff. And for a couple years, I was struggling. Like 10 years ago, I was struggling on a business that wasn't doing so hot. And I, I accrued all this debt because of the business. And this book really did help me. It changed a lot of my uh, spending habits, a lot of my mentality. And actually, it even comes in on some videos that I've done. I always tell everybody, use your credit cards to get the cash back, but make sure you pay that credit card right away. Do not pay any interest if you're buying precious metals. And do not load up your credit cards to buy precious metals. And that mentality is from this book, being debt free, uh, snowballing your credit card payments in order to get out of debt with your credit cards. And then as a little bonus in the book, he also talks about retirement and very ordinary uh, investing, property, 401k, life insurance, etc. So very, very ordinary mutual funds, but never mentions gold or silver and actually the complete opposite. If you ever watch the Dave Ramsey show and somebody calls in saying, I have X amount of gold, what should I do with it? Or X amount of silver, what should I do with it? Almost 100% of the time, at least 100% of the time uh, since I've seen, he would tell them to sell it regardless of when it was bought, regardless of anything. And one specific caller called and said they bought around 2010 and we're talking silver in 2010. Now, if you're not familiar, 2010 to 2013-ish was a very crazy year for silver especially. Silver was in the 35, 40 an ounce range. And as you guys know, it still has not eclipsed the 30 mark since 2010. So imagine how upside down that person is and yet he still told them to sell. Another thing to take notice, if you think about it, 2010, gold was around 1,700, 1,800. So if you bought gold in 2010 and waited 10 years till now, you actually would have made money. Whereas everyone that bought silver in that time frame would still be upside down. So that's something to consider when you're kind of uh, distributing how you want to do your stack. You should have gold in your stack because in a long frame point of view, Gold has actually outperformed silver regardless of the percentage growth that we're seeing. Yes, silver has grown faster, but if you're a longtime stacker, gold was actually the winning metal. Now, a lot of what Dave Ramsey says makes a lot of sense. I have to be 100% honest. As you guys know, I'm a hardcore stacker. I have a gold and silver channel. So obviously, I believe in it because I'm here. But let's be real. Some of the things he says does make sense. And I'm going to go over a couple of those things. But there's also some things he says that proves he doesn't fully understand gold and silver. Now, what I think it is, Dave Ramsey is an older gentleman. You know, he's into investing. He wants to see numbers. He's all about math. That's very apparent in this book as well. I buy things that have a mathematical, predictable thereby rate of return. I can actually forecast based on what it's done in the past. He wants to see math. And with commodities, there's no math. And that's one of the things he hates about gold and silver. Now, if you compare gold and silver to stocks or mutual funds, there's a big difference. There's a huge difference, actually. 
because you can almost predict to some extent what a mutual fund's gonna do, what property is gonna do, what stocks are gonna do, because you have EPS, you have PEs, there's a lot of different things, a lot of numbers, a lot of statistics, lots of charts, where gold and silver don't. Gold and silver is a commodity, and therefore, it is strictly all about supply and demand. The only thing that drives the price on it is one of two things, fear or greed. You cannot predict whether somebody is going to be scared enough to move all their money over into gold and drive gold prices up, or greedy enough to move all their money out of gold and drive gold prices down. When there's fear, yes, gold and silver go up. But what he doesn't like about it is you don't know when everybody is going to dump their gold and silver and essentially dump the gold and silver price. And he's absolutely right. And if you look at 2020, the way it's been for gold and silver, you have to admit that in some sense, he is absolutely right. When there was a lack of supply, look what happened. The premiums were through the roof. Everybody was buying. And I'm going to be honest, my Instagram, people are not buying like they were just a month ago. It's already starting to decline a bit. So he is absolutely right about that. There's greed and fear. That is the only thing that really drives gold and silver. And he's even gone as far as to compare corn to gold. We don't buy corn futures. We don't buy gemstones. We don't buy silver. We don't buy gold. These are commodities. Once again, it makes a little bit of sense. But on the opposite end of everything that he says, as right as he is about all that and the commodities that can be easily manipulated in price. The price of things can be very easily manipulated. We've seen it done to gold alone. So just imagine there's tin that's been manipulated, nickel that's been manipulated, all these different metals and corn. And just look at the history of these things. And commodities can be manipulated in some way, whereas stocks and futures of these companies, the PE report ratios, the EPS reports, those things can't really be manipulated. So that's his mentality. How can you make an educated guess on when to get in on gold and silver? When? You don't know. You would have to know the supply and demand, and we just don't know what exactly is the level of supply, and the demand is hard to tell as well. But at the same time, I do think that Dave Ramsey is stuck in the late 90s when silver was at like $8 an ounce, $11 an ounce, and gold was like 800 an ounce. I told that last guy, that young man before the break, get rid of his gold, don't buy gold. Okay. The average annual rate of return on gold is about 1% over the last 70, 80 years. Over the last five years, it has broke even. If you go back before that, it was the high when everybody was scared to death that the economy was going to crash. A bunch of people put gold. It was 2200 an ounce. Now it's 1400 an ounce. You would have lost 34% since then. I think he still has that mentality. Obviously, there's been a lot of growth since then. Now, I'm not saying to fully invest into gold and silver. I agree with him 100%. Do not put all your money in anything. Uh, in the housing market, you always want to diversify. And gold and silver is a very good way to diversify your portfolio. And it's a physical asset. And I've mentioned this in one of my latest videos that that physical asset aspect of gold and silver, there's a lot of things that just cannot offer that. So you should have a portion of your portfolio in gold and silver, regardless of uh, the commodities being able to be manipulated or there's really no way to gauge whether it's going to go up or down or when to buy or when to sell. In one of his recent videos, probably about three months ago, there was a caller called in about having gold, $50,000 worth of gold. This was three months ago. So pretty close to when gold was starting to uh, gain some steam, right? Now, he gave this guy bad advice. And the, the reason why is because gold ended up going up substantially more and he basically told him to sell it then. But he, uh, you know, if that guy sold, he lost money. 
because three months down the road, gold hit its all time high. But in that video, he made a very good point, and I think we we kind of overlook it <laughs> as gold and silver stackers, and that is that gold is no longer tied to the dollar. Therefore, even if the dollar is devalued, it does not affect the gold price. So it comes back once again to what he said about a commodity. But let's just pretend it did, that it takes okay. us to a, a real heavy inflation rate. There is no promise that gold follows that on an mm -hmm. inverse relationship, meaning there is no promise that the value of gold goes up as the value of the dollar goes down because they are not tied together in any way. There is no index. We do not operate on the gold standard anymore. Another thing he has against gold and silver is that it is hard to actually make money. And he's all about making money. You read this book, he's all about seeing profit, extra cash flow, and things like that. Being debt free, being one of his biggest things. Gold and silver are extremely hard to make any sort of money. And they have something which I've mentioned before that stocks don't have, 401k doesn't have, and that is a personal attachment. You get attached to this stuff and that can affect your judgment when it's time to sell, when it's time to buy. It can affect those judgments and he is 100% against anything that is driven by emotion. And gold and silver is a very emotional investment, right? Or you don't want to call it an investment, even hedge. If you don't sell at the right time, if you don't buy at the right time because you are emotionally attached, then you're making mistakes and he's right about that. Now these guys that are, you know, well known for their financial advice, for their investment advice can be wrong. So obviously I could be wrong and a lot of the other channels could be wrong and the point is, nobody knows what's going to happen. And gold and silver is one of the most unpredictable things you can buy. And that's the honest truth. Now, if you're buying at an all-time high, yeah, it's, it's more likely to come down from that than it is to go up. That's just statistically more viable that it's going to come down from that rather than go up further. And we've seen this with the stock market reaching all-time highs along with gold, and now they are just getting battered. Obviously, like I said before, I believe in gold and silver, but you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with your money because you earn that money, and if you're putting it in the wrong places, if you're putting too much in the wrong places, it could really hurt you financially. Those people that bought in 2010 a huge amount of silver are just now getting three quarters of what they paid back 10 years ago. So mistakes can be made in gold and silver, just like in the stock market. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions a lot of us have is that gold and silver are a safe haven and it will never hurt us. But the truth is it could hurt us just like stocks. And that is the truth. Now they serve a different purpose. Gold and silver should not be viewed as an investment and Dave Ramsey is looking at it as an investment. So he's not seeing any return from this investment. And that's one of the main things he does not like about it. Minus the fact that there's no numbers involved. There's no, um, there's no ability to predict because there's no math. And he's right. There is no way to predict. But once again, these experts can be wrong. Just look at Warren Buffett sold all his airline stock right before it went up like crazy, over 35% or something crazy like that. And I actually did the opposite. He sold all of his stake and guess what happened? It went all the way down in price. I saw an opportunity, bought over $7,000 worth of American Airlines and another 3,000 worth of Delta. And I ended up making a nice chunk of money going against somebody that is known for stocks. The point of this video is one, explaining why Dave Ramsey hates gold and silver. This is a very famous person, very uh, savvy investor, and there's a lot of hate <laughs> uh, emanating from Dave Ramsey when it comes to gold and silver. So I wanted to clarify some things 
But also, it's a very important time right now for stackers. We are in the middle of a very crazy time for gold and silver. As you can tell, it's been a little volatile over the past couple months, and so has the stock market. It's a very dangerous time to go all in. And I think some of us are a little bit too worried about having money on a computer screen and being against that idea and having the physical stuff. I think we get too heavily involved. Whenever you do anything, whether it's investing, even what you eat, you have to do things in moderation. So make sure you're not going all in on gold, all in on silver. Make sure you are uh, diversifying in your portfolio. That is the best thing you can do. And gold and silver looks good on the portfolio. If you hold it for a long time, more than likely you will gain in the end. And no matter what, it is an asset. It's never going to be worthless. And that's something that stocks can't say, that it's never going to be worthless. Gold and silver will never be worthless. That reason alone should at least get you a little bit of gold into the portfolio or a little bit of silver into the portfolio just for that security. And it's a negative asset. So when there's fear, it's gonna go up in price. So, but just like stocks, guys, you have to time your buying. You have to time your selling. And yes, the longer you hold gold and silver, if you're not in it for the money, it's all depending on your mentality. My mentality happens to be if I can make some money off my gold and silver to buy more gold and silver, then what's the harm in that? So that's my mentality. And that's why oftentimes I actually talk about coin flipping and you know buying low and I show you guys where to buy low and you know when you should probably sell a little bit. That's exactly why, in order to increase your stack. Because if you're not taking money out of your disposable income to put more into gold and silver, instead you're using your gold and silver to increase your stack, then it's costing you way less to increase your stack. You get what I'm saying? You're not having to put more disposable income. Stick with the percentage of your disposable income and use that for gold and silver. And don't get caught up in those crazy predictions. Guys, do not get caught up in those predictions. On both ends of the spectrum, whether it's these insanely high numbers or these insanely low numbers, Try to keep your emotions level and just buy at a certain pace. 2% of my disposable income will be for gold and silver and stick to that and you'll be just, just fine. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think, but that's exactly why Dave Ramsey does not like gold and silver at all, at all, because it cannot be controlled. Uh, you can't put any numbers to it. There's no way to predict uh, things like that. If you really wanted to completely prep for a meltdown, it'd be generators, bottled water, guns, and bullets. And that preps you for a complete meltdown better than bars of gold does. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's all about discussions, and that's how we learn. We learn from these discussions. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.